Great. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Daza Greenwood, and um, I was asked to actually say a few words about myself by way of context and framing going forward, because I think I'm unfamiliar to most people in the room. Um, typically, I hang out in technology circles, and it's been a while since I've been at a legal conference. Um, so, by way of background, uh, I started my career as a lawyer um, in the 90s, and uh, was a uh, deputy general counsel and general counsel in the Commonwealth of Mass for Technology in the Weld Administration, and um, learned a lot about practicing law and uh, managing legal operations. And uh, our deal was that um, I would provide legal services and that I would have a key to the server room so that we could actually go and, and hack some things, as we would now call it. And uh, this was the dawning of the web. And so most of the thing, the network we started with was not TCP IP, it was a Banyan Vines network and the um, way that we stored data, everything, it was pre-web. Um, and um, a number of people, because it was that context uh, included fairly innovative people with um, really severe financial pressures from the uh, Dukakis administration, where he was terrific, but he was running for president and uh, left the state um, somewhat in disrepair due to a lot of reasons, but our bond status was a triple, was junk bond status basically when we, when we took over. And there was a lot, we had to do a lot more with less with technology and a lot of that was legal um, because the state government is a heavily regulated entity um, and affects many others. So it was a really deep practice of law policy through technology largely. And, um, and um, the reason I'm, oh, so I guess I should say my particular area was electronic signatures, contracts, and transactions. And that's largely because as we tried to transition, um, you know, in-person and paper um, processes to a digital footing, it came up all the time. And uh, having to solve for it, um, you know, you solve electronic signatures once or twice, and before you know it, you become like the guy that knows about electronic signatures and start um, becoming uh, deeper in it. And so one of the things that we recognized, which I was also told to say, <laughs> is um, that uh, we needed a legal framework, um, not sort of one at a time contractual and um, transactional solutions to digitization of signatures, contracts, and um, transactions, but um, statutes that were um, recognized nationally. So I spent, again, thanks to the Weld Administration, they flew me around for a couple, three years, and I was at every single drafting meeting of the Uniform Law Commission for what became Uniform Electronic Transactions Act. And um, we were big contributors to that. And similarly, um, parallel legislation um, through the, um, then, um, it was on McCain's committee when he was chairman of uh, Commerce and Bliley in the House, the Electronic Signatures and Global and National Commerce Act for parallel legislation. And that was really all about setting a reliable, appropriate legal framework upon which um, electronic really um, life could occur. Um, but the, the, the way that we could express identity and do transactions, come to agreements, ensure valid and enforceable um, activity um, that map to existing bodies of law. And that, I suppose that's the theme that, in a sense, brought me here today, is this just interest in absolutely creating cool projects and um, doing things that matter, but in a way that um, can be extrapolated more broadly. Um, actually, I was supposed to mention one other thing. I, and I, I should say, I also, so I stopped practicing law in the, like around 2000, and just started doing consulting to um, companies and, sometimes to legal departments that had some large technology project. Um, YouTube is working, I think. <laughs> and um, and there was very, very privileged to um, be taken up as a sort of an adjunct faculty at MIT um, you know, sort of across the river, where um, in the late 90s and 2000, I think it started in 97, e-commerce was off the hook and they didn't have enough people that could teach um, you know, web and um, e-commerce related um, topics and um, you know, it's a small town, new people, and I was invited to um, help start teaching. And it's so great at MIT for people that are at all techy or interested in technology and tinkering and hacking with things. So many curious minds. I just found it's utopia for me. And I've just never, I've always had a foot there at least since 97. 
um, and, and the last few years since 2009, a half-time appointment as a researcher in the media lab and half-time just of doing um, typical um, uh, enterprise-facing consulting. And so it's really in that capacity, wearing my MIT hat, that um, I am with you today. Um, and um, it's been a long time coming, but um, finally at MIT, we are about to announce, in fact, I think apparently we're announcing right here, right now, um, the commencement of a legal program. Um, it, you can find the registration for our debutante kind of party, our coming out party with Integra and with the IBM Watson team focused on law um, as sponsors is going to be a two-day event on October 30th and 31st. Um, and the event is titled MIT Legal Forum on AI and Blockchain. And the, we've got a pretty hot real estate domain for a registration page or pre-registrations, mit.edu forward slash law. And um, if you register, um, you will be invited to uh, updates and announcements. We're doing some hangouts with some of the speakers and um, talk, previewing some of the topics and also gathering and garnering t topics and questions and um, issues and topics and ideas and possibilities that people have that, that you would nominate for us to discuss. Um, you can sign up for all that at that URL. Um, I think it, hold, and then coming out of this, we'll have a more of a regular set of programs with the classroom and with research and with um, partnerships at MIT. Um, part of that is, is we've got a visiting professor of law now at the Media Lab by the name of Gabe Tenenbaum, who I know some of you know. He's a professor at Suffolk University Law School, and he is the chair of the um, Academic Alliance, the Integra Academic Alliance. Um, we're, we're bringing together academic and research communities um, that are transforming legal services and the law itself, in some cases, through um, technology, um, just how it's delivered and, and what it is as we refactor it to be digital. Gabe is a great guy. Um, he wishes he could be here today. I'm standing in for him, um, and, uh, and I will be helping um, with, with his work on this academic alliance. Um, the way I'm going to be helping is mostly by doing the thing I like most, which is hacking the law. Um, and so the way that um, we do that, there's a group, believe it or not, called Legal Hackers. And I just want to do a quick poll. How many people, show of hands, have ever heard of Legal Hackers? Really? Seriously. How many people have not heard of Legal Hackers? Really? Drummond. Okay. All right. So we got to hang out more often. <laughs> so the last um, internet identity workshop I went to is a few years ago. So um, I'll come back this time. Um, Legal Hackers is my favorite group. Um, and it's um, basically a meetup of um, groups, many practicing lawyers, many folks from startups and technologists um, in cities across the world now. We just had a su our third summit on, uh, a couple of weeks ago in Brooklyn. I think we had like 25 countries represented, actually flew people out, or 20. So we had quite a few, and we've got a lot more that participate online, and we track each other's work. Um, many people, they were very excited about the launch of Integra Ledger. And um, while we had all the chairs together a couple weekends ago, we actually set up a ringlet of, of small prototype jams, is what we're calling them, um, in these cities where we'll be looking at and getting hands-on Integra Ledger and some of the associated tools, doubtless IBM Watson for at least some of them, probably Toronto. Um, and then doing some integration work, brainstorming about use cases. And then at the end of the evening, the way we do these things is we just kind of circle up and do a review of what people came up with and some conversations, some synthesis and some feedback. They're terrific sessions, uh, the format we call Prototype Jam. Um, so San Francisco's coming up, and it's in association with a computational contracts um, workshop um, at Codex. Um, so we'll be um, gathering some people just before that um, at this hack, at this um, Prototype Jam. Uh, and then Toronto will be really uh, debut, and we, we have the chairperson of the Toronto Legal Hackers, Amy Turahar, here. And um, we'll be gathering quite a few folks up there. That'll be a bigger affair um, with more, even beyond a prototype jam. North Carolina is interesting. Nina Kilbride, um, who um, heads that one, is also le chief legal engineer for Monax, a smart contract company, um, is going to be leading a weekend hack um, to, on uh, state 
crowdfunding law um, and a SEC exemption that came out recently and basically building up a prototype with some interested people um, of how to do that platform, starting with the statute as the re business requirements for the system, which we, that's a great idea. And she kind of was very excited a couple weekends ago about this, I, this sort of epiphany she had reading the statute, which was tight. Elaine Marshall, Secretary of State, their longtime Secretary of State and fine person who's been collaborative over decades, uh, I have to say, um, on technology. Um, her staff wrote it, and it's a great statute. Uh, and um, we're going to attempt to realize it as the source of requirements and against which we'll test for success metrics um, over this weekend. And guess where the legal identities and the document IDs and legal matter IDs are coming from, you know, kind of uh, funding by funding in Tegra Ledger, um, because we need a source of truth for those identities, and it's not we could hack it, um, we could invent something, another fractured silo of identity, but this is really not um, useful. Um, and so um, this is, that'll be the integration that we explore um, that weekend. Um, Massachusetts legal hackers to be decided, but um, probably something with analytics, um, maybe some Thomson, uh, Thomson Reuters blockchain app. Um, but we should talk about exactly what open for nominations of what we can hack. Um, and New York Legal Hackers probably, we will, I believe, will be with Clause.io, um, where we will be looking uh, with Howman and others at their API. Um, and as you construct these contracts, there is absolutely a need for to identify the parties in the contract, identify the, um, the document, got the contract, and the associated files or doc, document cluster for the contract. And then there's a legal matter. And so um, in that case, we'd be looking to um, integrate with that system um, and see how, see how that goes and learn from that. You know, Clio is a great example of an API where they've been great collaborators uh, uh, with legal hackers and with um, the emerging legal program at MIT. Who have, they now have a fairly mature REST interface and OAuth2 um, interface to integrate your apps and services, um, commercial apps or at a firm or an enterprise. Um, they've got a, um, a legal matter um, they've got uh, certainly identity of uh, individuals and, and of documents. And so there's another hack that really wants to happen to integrate with Clio, maybe at a city near you, maybe at your city. And so I'm like, I, I love to hack the law. Uh, I like these little prototype jams. I learned how to do it at MIT, how to wrap it prototype from a legal and policy um, context and to utilize those rules as requirements and also to use the wisdom of the law, not just as constraints that limit creativity, but also of, um, but also as a way to derive the wisdom of what we should do and how. And um, now it is my privilege and my, um, and my pleasure to introduce again, Bob, um, who's going to help sort of summarize and, and bring it home and to um, say one of the best treats of starting to advise uh, this um, integral ledger has been to meet the other advisors and the people involved. And, um, with that, I give you Bob. Thank you.